I'm going to tell you about making a violin and it's going to be rubbish. <laughs> I'm a violin maker and I teach at this place, the Newark School of Violin Making in Nottinghamshire. We have students from all over the world learning to make violins, violas and cellos and learning to repair them as well. I was asked to take part in uh, the Scrap Peep Orchestra programme. Over the next two months, the cameras followed us around while we made the instruments. We decided to make the instruments out of scrap and we had to make 12 violins and four violas. Plastic is not the best material for a violin, but we decided what we were going to do and we stuck to it. So the students helped me make the instruments. We uh, made them as best we could. And the students tried them out. As students uh, have a, such a great sense of fun. They uh, loved the instruments. They thought they were great. We took them to the orchestra and they hated them. So we uh, got the instruments back and we, we worked on them again and then we uh, took them back to the orchestra. They still hated them. After a while they got better. On the day at the Albert Hall the instruments sounded pretty good. At the end of the performance the audience rose up. It was a terrific atmosphere and it was great fun. And they weren't just applauding the instruments, they were applauding the fact that we'd set out on this really difficult journey and we'd got there in the end. The world of the violin maker is steeped in tradition which goes back to the 16th century. The violins we make today are hardly any different. This is one made by Andrea Amati in 1559. You'd hardly notice any difference in the violins that you see today apart from maybe these guys uh, which were made in our Christmas fiddle race this year. That's when the students get to use their own ideas. Generally the world of the violin maker is a pretty tranquil one. We inhabit nice cosy workshops like this surrounded by wood and tools and instruments of various kinds. What happens uh, sometimes is we leave our comfort zone and we go off somewhere like this, which is uh, a workshop that we helped to set up in Jacmel on the south coast of Haiti. Haiti is an incredibly poor country, but the music schools in Haiti are thriving and they do incredibly important social function. We, through a little organisation that we formed called Luthier Sans Frontier, we go to help the uh, music schools. We teach people to maintain and repair the instruments. And we've done this in Afghanistan and Uganda and uh, Ecuador. Taking what we do to somewhere that's hot and sticky with very limited resources, that's quite a challenge. But the Haitian people are incredibly uh, resourceful. We learn a lot from the way that they live. There's some things that we picked up at the local market. A lamp here made from a powdered milk tin. A kitchen grater made from a piece of tin which has got 2,000 holes in it punched by hand. And a piece of artwork made from a piece of car bonnet or something like that to be sold to tourists. These things are recycled but not being reprocessed. They're just being uh, taken from one use and put to another one. The problem we have in Haiti is the electricity supply is very erratic. If we can't use the electricity, we can't warm up the glue we used for our repairs. So this is a typical Haitian style solution. We got uh, a tin can, or two tin cans, one of them's cut up like so. A little candle put in, another uh, tin can on top. And our glue goes in there with some water around it. It's really, really simple and really convenient and we don't need electricity anymore. And we can work wherever we want and here it is in Haiti in 2010 being used to repair an instrument that was damaged in the earthquake. We can also use other rubbish like a bicycle inner tube for doing some repairs that uh, we would normally use uh, special clamps for. Strings are always a problem in Haiti because of they're very expensive and they're hard to get hold of. So what we do is we get strings that are partly used from orchestras and workshops in this country and we collect them 
and we recycle them, uh, we check them over, we repackage them and we send them off to projects around the world. And the music schools go from strength to strength and this time they have instruments that are working really well. It's a great privilege to be part of this scene and to, to, be, uh, to witness how dedicated the students are and to see how well they play on instruments which are of very modest quality. But it's hard to kind of reconcile that world in uh, Haiti with the lavish world of the violinist in this country where a single violin can be worth 10 million pounds. It's hard to get your head around that really. But I do have an idea for a project which might help us to kind of tie a few of these thoughts together in a creative way. How about if we could have a project which involved uh, looking at cultural issues, looking at poverty, looking at music, and also involved instrument making as well. How about if we could make a violin in a day made from scrap materials using only simple skills that everybody could engage with? There are some problems with that which we found with Scrap Heap Orchestra. But what about if we have a look at the way the violin is designed to start with. It's a beautiful piece of 450 year old technology. This is a, um, it's made from wood and glue and nothing else. Some of it is just a millimeter thick, yet it's incredibly strong. Between the ends of a violin, there's about 25 kilos of tension. It's equivalent to having on the end a sack of potatoes or an eight-year-old child. The design's at the absolute limit of the materials and that's why violins need lots of maintenance. They're very high performance uh, machines. And that's why we need to go to Haiti to teach people how to, to repair things. If we have a look at the scrap violin, plastic's the last thing you want to make an instrument from. It's heavy, it bends when it's under tension and it's difficult to work with. And if you heat it up in the oven like I did for the program, it gives off toxic fumes, which I only found out afterwards looking at YouTube. But uh, <laughs> what about redesigning it a bit more intelligently? This is a uh, scrap heap violin number two, which Hannah is now going to play to us. So what do you think of it, Hannah? It's rubbish. <laughs> it's rubbish, yeah. I gotta take those as a compliment, thank you. This is uh, the latest version of a scrap violin which can actually be made in a day. The front and the back are made from cardboard, the sides are made from aluminium drinks cans. It's really fun to make. In fact, you can get to that stage in about half an hour. The wonderful thing about cardboard, corrugated cardboard, is you can stick nice uh, kebab skewers and pieces of coat hanger and things like that into the corrugations and that makes it uh, possible to vary the stiffness of the front and the back. Well, that's exactly what violin makers do with wood. They uh, just vary the stiffness to get the best performance. The fingerboard, most people think it's a piece of uh, ebony, it's actually a piece of four inch drain pipe, which um, works perfectly, it's exactly the right curve. The tuning pegs are made from three inch nails, which again work really well. In fact, it's the one thing that the members of the BBC Concert Orchestra actually like. But the real difference is inside the instrument. Within the center of the violin, there's this new piece of wood which goes right through, connects with the neck, and goes to the bottom. It doesn't touch any moving parts, so it means that um, it's just not having any effect other than it takes all the 25 kilos of tension on the instrument. So now the front and the back of the instrument are 
free to vibrate without all that tension. The front only has to support the downward pressure of the strings. So what do we have here? Is this just uh, an amusing piece of nonsense from somebody who spends too much time on his own? <laughs> or uh, something of real value? Well, probably a bit of both. How about an event called Cardboard Orchestra? You come along with your family or your group of friends and you make an instrument in a day and you think about cultural issues, the connection between poor countries and music and the connection between possibly music and recycling. At the end of the day, you have a concert on instruments that never existed a few uh, hours before. We can learn a lot from the inventive uh, people of Haiti in the way that they reuse materials. People like to make things, especially things that have a use, but we do it less and less because we leave it to the professionals and the mass producers. And along the way, we lose our ability to use our hands in creative ways. We've become victims of this tyranny of perfectionism that actually tells us uh, if something's not perfect, it has no use. Well, uh, try telling that to the people in Haiti. The word amateur actually means someone who does something for love and not for gain. And that's a really noble aim. When we make things, it's empowering. It builds our self-esteem and it celebrates our humanity and our uniqueness. So let's get busy. Yes, this is a load of rubbish, but it's also something quite valuable as well. Thank you.